Welcome to The Wrong End of the Snake, a webcast about audio, touring, and the relationships we have built between our road families that will be reunited soon. Tater and I have had an 18-year relationship on The Wrong End of the Snake with bands like Ted Nugent, Kid Rock, Slash, Stone Temple Pilots, Prophets of Rage, Iron Maiden, and most notably, 10 years with Linkin Park. My co-host, Kevin Tater McCarthy, is a world-class monitor engineer with over 30 years in the business. I'm very proud to call him my friend and partner. He has eight Top Dog Monitor Engineer of the Year awards and two Parnelli Monitor Mixer of the Year awards. I am Ken Van Druden, a.k.a. Pooch. I'm a front house engineer with three decades in the music industry. I'm a three-time Grammy-nominated recording engineer. I have eight Top Dog Front of House Engineer of the Year awards, and I'm winner of the Parnelli Front of House Mixer of the Year award. Let's do a little housekeeping. Uh, please use the chat window in the Zoom app to communicate amongst yourselves. If you are streaming from our YouTube channel and you want to get in on the action, register to be in the Zoom call for future episodes. There are links to register in all of our social media. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom map and ask in that window. We will answer as many as possible during the hour. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and social media. Tell your friends, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook is at wrong end of the snake. Tater, why don't you introduce our guest? All right, thanks, Pooch. Nice introduction today. We'd like to welcome Gil Smith. He's the most sought-after international music director, producer, and arranger in the business. His live credits include the biggest tours, award shows, TV specials ranging from Lil Wayne, Nicki, Nicki Minaj, Drake, Chris Brown, CeeLo Green, g -Eazy, Travis Barker, Eminem, Britney Spears, Lady Gaga, Carrie Hilson, Brandy, and Faith Evans, to name a few. Uh, it's great to have Gil here today. He's going to fill us in a lot of stuff we need to know. And welcome. Thanks for coming today, Gil. Thank you, guys. Awesome introduction. Wow. <laughs> hey, Gil, man. It's so awesome to have have you here. Um, you know, we've been friends for a bunch of years. And, and um, you know, we, uh, we are trying to have different people from different parts of the industry on this so that people kind of get a, a broad scope of everything. I mean, we've had financial people on here. Uh, we've had, you know, um, uh, CEOs of companies. Um, and so when we thought, hey, we should have a musical director on, your name was at the top of the list and we wanted to have you um, just because, um, you know, you're, you're this amazing person that is at the top of his game. Um, so, yeah, we just we, we kind of wanted to um, have a conversation about what you do and also maybe a little bit about what um, what's going on right now in the world of, of uh, being a musical director when there's no live events, really. <laughs> um, so, um, but let's get started. I, I kind of want to know, uh, I actually don't know in, in our friendship, I don't know this, like exactly where you came from as far as being a musician and, and your, your journey. I know you graduated from Berkeley, right? Uh, went to Berkeley. <laughs> went to Berkeley. That's great. Well, I think we all went to Berkeley. It, it's uh, it's the it's the graduation part that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, that's part, that's part. <laughs> but um, but what was your journey? So you you are uh, traditionally a keyboard player. I know you play all kinds of instruments, but but keyboards is your main instrument, correct? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I and I think um, the easiest way to say it is my my parents were like very militant when it came to what we're going to do musically. I have an older sister. And so it, it was a rule in the house that you had to take piano lessons ah. until you were 18 and t or until you moved out, whichever came first. Wow. Yeah. And they did not play. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that was uh, not a very fun experience for you. <laughs> now, were your were your parents musical? Yeah, my mom she 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 was always singing in choirs and groups in church. Uh, but my dad, um, man, he is to this day the master musician. Oh wow! Is he plays? guitar he plays the harmonica and i'm not talking about dabbles like he can play 
He kills it. Yeah, he plays the organ and he plays the saw, you know, and, and he's really good. Whoa, <laughs> what a trip. Yeah, so he 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 was that guy. And got it. This day he to me, he's the master musician. Wow, that's amazing. So it's it's in your genes as well as being forced upon you. <laughs> If it, if it wasn't in my genes, it was going to be there. As some, yeah. some <laughs> <laughs> but obviously you found some love in it because you've made it your career and, and have done very well at it. Um, yeah, so yeah. Um, where, where did you grow up? So I'm born and raised in L.A., and, um, but I'm first generation. My parents are from uh, Guatemala and Belize. So. Wow. Yeah, and then they came came over here. So I, I grew up in L.A., but I didn't necessarily uh, grow up in the L.A. scene, per se, right? Um, and so now, and now that I look back on it, it's it was an interesting uh, journey because w- once I started touring, all of my tour buddies were, like, from the East Coast. Um, interesting. Yeah, but I was born and raised here. You know what I mean? Okay, so so I like to say out there is, is I went to high school, by the way, and uh, to, to elaborate <laughs> on the earlier thing. But um, so you're, you're not you didn't yeah, go to college. Is that what you're saying? I went to high school. <laughs> yeah. So um, you go from you're not in the LA scene. You go to Berkeley. Obviously, your parents are training you and giving you lessons, and you're idolizing your dad not only for being your dad, but an awesome musician what where where's your break coming from from getting from playing playing at the house watching your dad to getting your first your first tour or your first paying job right right so okay so church was a big thing um and i grew up seventh day adventist and although we're not like the toe tapping you know foot stomping kind of pentecostal church we're still very, very rich in music. Like take six to Seventh Day Adventist, Brian McKnight, Seventh Day. You know what I'm saying? Right. Prince was Seventh Day Adventist at, at, at a point in time. So the the music is very rich. We'll do a little bit of gospel. We'll do a little bit of hymns. So I like that I grew up in that setting because I I got little pockets of each uh, genre. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, so I had to like play for the choir and play for the groups that, that came along with the, you're going to take piano lessons package. Right. Right. And, um, and and so there were aspects about that, that I liked, that, that I, that I enjoy, you know, of course the playing aspect, the practicing, uh, not so much, but that's kind of where that, that started. Right. And then I also want to point out, um, because I think it's important, when I was a teenager, I got to a point where whatever my parents said was like the worst thing in the world, right? And I met a mentor. He was the gospel choir director at my high school, and I went to a music high school. Um, his name is Fred Martin. Shout out, Fred, if you're, if you're on here. And... Um, so he he became my mentor, and at that time he would say the exact same thing my parents would say. Like my parents would be like, "Get good grades," and I'd be like, "You guys don't understand me." Like, no. And and Fred would be like, "You got to get good grades," and I'd be like, "Whoa." <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and so, but at that time, I, I think God just kind of placed him in my life because he literally took over in 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 some years for my my parents and made sure that he was guiding me in the way that they were guiding me you know what i'm saying and for some reason it just fell on deaf ears because they were my parents but when i met fred he uh he taught me taught me how to play like gospel chops you know what i'm saying uh, because man, he to this day he can smash that B three like he nice. is, he's he's the guy. So, 
So anyway, fast forward, we used to, I, I was in gospel choir in high school. We used to go do these gospel brunches at House of Blues. You I know, know them well. I know them very well. Yes. Okay. And so I'm 14 at the time. And, uh, and so we're on stage and I'm singing, you know. And so Fred is playing and directing. And we're doing this gospel brunch. It's Sunday morning. And so all of a sudden, like, he knows I play. He calls me over and he's like, watch what I'm doing. So he's directing. He's playing. He calls me over and he's like, watch me. So and then he just gets up off of the, <laughs> the instrument and goes to direct. And I had to take over, you know. Wow. And so that that was really my first time like outside of church being on a stage and with with that adrenaline and I was like no you're not gonna get up off this <laughs> but he did and I had to just kind of follow follow what he was doing and so from that point on I the reason why I told that story is because I relate that with me actually starting to like love performing and love like like music you know that's so awesome man that's, you know it's a great story uh, yeah i had i had similar experience um you know this this episode is about you but um i had very very much a similar experience where i would not listen to my parents and had a mentor in my life and i i think it's important as we get older for us to be that guy for somebody else right so, um, you know, uh, shout out to all you guys out there that are kind of, you know, older guys that are taking a younger guy under their wing and saying, you know, hey, do it this way or this is the way that I've been doing it. And, and um, man, uh, because that you you spoke of an, an instrumental moment that kind of changed your life in, a, in one moment. Um, and and I I, too, had that experience. Um, and because of that, I am where I am. And because of that, you are where you are. And so, man, if you can be that guy for somebody else, yeah, oh man, there's, there's nothing. Yeah. Like that. so. Fantastic. And, and I'd like to say just a tidbit in there. If you never had one of those gospel brunch buffets at house of blues, you're definitely missing. Some. <laughs> so. That buffet was life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, let's fast forward just a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, let's just jump around here a little bit. But you know, I first met you on a K-pop gig, um, a uh, a Korean band called Big Bang, or a Korean I don't know what you call them. They're in a band. They were a boy boy band, yeah. boy band, um, and uh, which. You know, I didn't get hired by you and didn't know you. I was hired by somebody else and kind of just, you know, we we were put together. But when we got put together, I recognized right away that, hey, man, this is somebody that I want to work with in the future, you know. And, and um, it was uh, an exciting um, an exciting thing. How did that come about for you? Like, how did you get involved with Korean K-pop? Yeah. Okay. So an, another blessing. Um, so I was working with Carrie Hilson and uh, Nikki Minaj right before um, Big Bang. And both of those accounts, the creative director was Lorianne Gibson. And she's so, she's just amazing. So, so, um, so we had worked together and I literally was just sending her an email, just saying, hey, hope you're well. That was literally it. Wow. She hits me back like, I'm good. And I'm glad you contacted me. <laughs> and I'm she, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Just you, you can't you can't orchestrate this stuff. It just you know it's it's it, it's organic and i love when it happens so she's so she's like i'm glad you hit me up i have this uh thing that i'm doing with k-pop that was literally the first time i've ever heard the word k-pop so funny man <laughs> and she, I, you know and me she, too like when i got that call to meet you <laughs> i i was like i have no idea what k-pop is but i guess i'm flying to korea <laughs> You know, yeah. exactly. And so that um, 
you know how like you said once once we met each other like we knew okay this is the per- so once i got through that process of like getting that that account it was like none other like usually there's a homie and he's like you need an md here's my guy and then you're the md right this was like four interviews Whoa. like i had to put together all of this different it was a it was a thing and um, wow. but it let it let me know like once we got over there and saw the production and everything okay that's why it was a thing because yeah. th- your whole thing is a thing <laughs> oh my that's a, man it's this giant yeah it's massive uh, band yeah I don't even know even how to describe it. It's it's like, you know, um, it's, I guess if you've never seen a Korean K-pop band or K-pop or even uh, there's J- Japanese versions of it, um, it's bigger than any of the biggest artists here in the U.S., you know, which is um, an interesting thing in case you, uh, you guys out there don't know. I mean, there's a whole other world like outside of the U S music scene, man, there's a giant world out there that when we do get to go back to work, if you can tap that, um, boy, it's, it's a lot of work and it's turned into a lot of work for you. Right. Gil, like it still continues to, to give you work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, man, with, 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 with that particular K-pop label, um, six, six years for me, Wow. And then um some of the guys from the from the original band are still there, you know. So yeah, it's um just if if there are any you know musicians, engineers uh tuning in, just picture, you know, when you have that production meeting and then they just start chopping down the budget. Yeah. <laughs> like we all we all know what that is, right? We've been there. Yeah. Yeah. The artist is like, I want this amazing thing. And then you're like, okay, I can give you this amazing thing. And then they're like, well, I want it for two dollars. <laughs> K-pop, when we entered, just picture having that meeting and then them going, You can do whatever you want it to. <laughs> like that's what it was like for for us coming in and i I, you know even after uh you left um they brought they they brought in this was years after you left but they brought in uh some of their own uh front of house engineers i remember having a conversation uh with them and you know there's a translator you know so i'm so i'm having this middle conversation and i'm saying i wish one day we can just use all outboard gear for the for the tour and so then then the person translated that to the front of house engineer and he just responded like huh Mm -hmm. the next tour i go to front of house (laughs) there's apis there's knees there's avalons every single thing on stage was (laughs) round Wow. And I was like, I would never be able to try something like that. It would just be a a fantasy out here because the first thing they would say is it's too much. Yeah. It's not in the budget. So that's just to give you guys a glimpse of like that's K-pop production. They will make you fly from the back of the stadium. Like, right. Because it's really a fan controlled uh, thing in terms of quality, you know? Yeah. I always tell people that um, my experience with it was so strange because I can't remember exactly how many shows it was, but it was like a week of show sold out shows in Seoul for the beginning of the tour, you know, which was a a stadium filled with, um, you know, let's say it was 50,000 people in this thing. They sold it out for seven days straight at this place, you know? And I was like, this is unlike any other experience. Um, for me anyway, it was, it was trippy. Um, yeah. Yeah, the worst but, thing is coming back home and trying to explain it to people <laughs> who have no idea what K-pop or Big Bang is. I'm like, no, 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 you got to understand. Three nights in a row, 30,000 people sold out every night in yeah. the same venue. And that's, right. 
that's cool. When are you going back on tour with Lil Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> it's Lil Wayne. It's big. <laughs> It, but, but now people know, you know, right. People know about it. So yeah, it's, it's, speaking of multiple, cool. multiple artists like that. Now there's only one Gil. There's only one pooch, one tater. Now you've got many clients and, and massive names. They're all trying to pull at you and all need something. Well, how do you do it? If you have to put somebody else in your seat, uh, from trusting them, knowing them, hiring them, Whole nine yards. I'd love to know that because I, I know when I have to go from a tour and put somebody else in, you know, your name is still on it. If anything goes wrong, they, they're calling you and and all that kind of stuff. And 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 really, as a musical director, you're in charge of everybody in the band. You got to know all their parts. So you got to have somebody that with that same amount of knowledge and and with a resume just as good as yours, if not better, if there even can be someone with a better resume than yours. So how do you go about doing that? I'd, I'd like to know personally, just some tips. So when I have to do that again, it'll help me make a choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, in full transparency, I think that is, uh, there's a couple of components that we have to address. And, and it can be a, a cultural thing. It can be a background thing for me. I had to first get over myself, like understand that the whole um, notion of like, ah, uh, this person might take my gig, like, forget that. That's small minded thinking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and if I'm being a hundred percent transparent, that took me a while. And I, I would imagine. I, yeah. Yeah. And I had to, I had to crash and burn on some things um in order to expand my thinking and move from a and eh, this is for me this person's trying to take you know what i'm saying um to more of a how do i scale this, this brand you know because if if mcdonald's acted like that there would only be one mcdonald's wherever the first one was and we wouldn't get to enjoy going outside and walking two minutes and there's a McDonald's, you know? So I had to like get over that um, and, and deal with that and then understand that it's about scaling. It's about, you know, creating the Gil Smith experience even when I'm not there. Um, and so I, I said that to say it's, it's not easy, right? Yeah. It's, you know, people do want to take your job. So that is, that is a real, it is a real thing. It just shouldn't be what I focus on, right? But it is something to be cognizant of. The next thing is, is um, sometimes people don't, they want to do what you do, but they don't really understand what it takes to do it. And, and, and by way of that, they don't value what it is that you value in the same way. So finding somebody with a spark, with the talent, um, but also with the with a similar mindset, I think is the foundation for being able to scale. And and how many people have you found like that? <laughs> still looking. Right, right. I'm still looking for on my end, but yeah, it's man, it's it's a lot. You know, you, you have to continue to refine. You have to, and I use McDonald's a lot because it's it doesn't matter where you go in the world, you're always here. Welcome to McDonald's. How may I help you? How may I take your? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. And, and then and then um, I love that because. I want to make my my business and my brand that way so that when people know that this is a saga account, this is a Gil Smith account, this is the result that you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and it takes a lot of refining, a lot of refining. Well, great, great answer. I didn't, um, you know, I really didn't know the answer, never thought about it at all. And to hear that from you, fan fantastic. I mean, that's probably some of the most valuable information we've done on this show so far. So I think that's a fantastic answer. So I yeah, absolutely. It, so along with that, you know, you're having to place 
the MD position, but you also have to have a stable of musicians uh, that you can pull from and uh, also have like-minded um, uh, goals, let's say, um, to, to achieve something as a team. Um, did you draw a lot of that on the church community or, or friend? Like, how does that work? Who do you, how do you decide who's going to be um, the guitar player for a, you know, uh, big bang, for example? Yeah. Yeah. So it first started out as just, okay, I know this person and they play. So like, <laughs> right. So let's go, let's go do this. But, um, you know, to circle back around, I, I went to Berkeley. I stayed there for about a year and a half. Um, but then later on, I went and got my degree in psychology because once I started touring, I realized that I got to figure out people, you know, like the music thing, especially when you're doing, you know, pop music or commercial music coming from Berkeley, like I learned this in, you know, in high school, like the music part of it. Right. Um, but it, the people part, oh yeah, no, I got to figure that out. So I, I went back and, and got my degree in psychology. And after that, it became less about like, okay, you play this instrument and I know you to like, now you're mixing personalities, right? And so that's how I, I, I construct a lot of the bands to this day. It's like, you know, you know, the different elements of your touring family, you know, and you don't want to necessarily fill it with people who are absolutely like minded. Um, because you need that contrast to kind of speak through the music when you play but you need to be able to manage that contrast off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When, when the, when somebody wants to go to sleep on the bus with their headphones that are blaring and the person <laughs> underneath them, you know, likes to sleep in complete and utter quiet. Like, and then it turns into a whole, you know what I'm saying? So totally. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I like to, uh, and another example is I, I don't, I'm not the guy that's going to go to the after parties and hang out with the artists and all that stuff. I'm, I'm good. I'm here to do my job. Yes. Do my Amen. Job well, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Amen. Right. But coming from the music department, I don't want to fill it with a bunch of people that are boring like me because then, you know, where's the fun in that? So, <laughs> You're looking for that guy, man, that that wants to go to them things. Yeah, man. so you gotta have one or two. Yeah, <laughs> you have to. You have to kind of mix it up. You have to have that guy that loves to hang out, you know, because he's representing the band. And so, if Got he's not there, then the band is cool. You know what I'm saying? Now, the flip yeah. side is that guy is always waking up late. So now I have to <laughs> offset that with a guy who's going to be on time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, dude, that's amazing. You, it's you know amazing. What, I, I really want to bring this up now, and, and it was something I don't want to bring up with, but um, I, I saw on the on the Facebook the other day, a, a certain person said, um, uh, with the climate we're all in and everything going on, and they had said, I don't want to tour with anybody that doesn't have the same beliefs as me or something like that. And I thought, you know, I've been riding on buses for over 30 years with people with different beliefs and I've never had an issue. And now that you've brought that up, another angle of that same thing, I thought, what if everybody's just alike? It's not going to be right. You can't do that. You know, and now that you've said that, it, it, you, you've made a lot more sense out of it than I have. But I was glad you just said that and brought that up like that because you're right. We can't all be the same. No. And it would be pretty mundane if, if we, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think I, oh, that's that's I think absolutely that. true. Absolutely true. I wow. great, great. I always, great. I always say one of my, one of the things that I always say is that the secret to my success is I'm able to walk into a room full of crazy people and identify what their needs are, um, and that's it. That's I mean, let's not even talk about my abilities as um, uh, a mixer. Like that is way more important. So I think it's awesome that you're talking about. Yes how you are building a team that 
obviously they have to have skills, right? They have to be players. Right. Um, but you're more concerned about the the family and the living together part of that um, uh, and how that's going to turn out after two years of, <laughs> of guys living together on a bus. Um, All man, part of the Gil Smith experience. I think that's great how you've <laughs> – you said the Gil Smith experience, and then you explained yeah. how you're getting that and trying to achieve that. Fantastic! Yeah, it's amazing. And I, and I, you know, in full transparency, like I said, I have crashed and burned. On this <laughs> Perfect, mind, right? But it's a, it's a, it's a journey. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a journey. So I just I want to get a little technical just for a minute here because we're not, we're kind of on this subject. We're talking about other people and all that stuff. And we usually don't talk about mixing and microphones and DBs and all that kind of stuff here. But as a musical director and me being a monitor engineer, you've got to know everybody's parts and you've got to hear everybody's parts and you've got to say, oh, call the guy out, you know, like, wrong note. You came in early one note. It's not the right note. That first note, it's the wrong, not the right note. And how are you hearing all of that? And what's your mix required to hear all that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you do have to hear everybody. Um, you know, there is a language that we've developed. It's a, it's a tour language. Um, and, and Pooch, I know, you know, it, even, even doing Justin Bieber, like you start hearing the different setups and the, you know what I'm saying? Totally. And so I try to get, guys who know that language right and it's a it's just something you develop when you've been on the road you know what the the crowd responds to um and it could be something as simple as a as a certain hi-hat pattern you know and you know what to do that takes it from, from playing on top of the, the the stems to now making it a live experience you know? right and and there's a there's a there's a space that you can sit right in there as a musician. <laughs> so the first thing I try to do is get guys who know that language because that cuts down on so many other things. And then I don't mind bringing in uh, some like a newbie who maybe doesn't know that language, but will catch on eventually. Um, and then you know my my mix has to be i have to hear everything except for time codes so <laughs> <laughs> so, my, so in my mix there's comms there's yeah right talking, there's a, a cowbell a literal yeah. cowbell that's going on and and now i feel like when i'm in the car and i'm just listening to music and there's no click i feel weird <laughs> <laughs> and then and all this is going on is your instrument that you're you're playing your keyboard? I would think that's your main instrument you're playing as your uh, MDing. Is that just so second nature? You are not even thinking of that because you're got your head in so many different. And like a monitor engineer, you know, you're thinking of everybody's different mixes. You got 14 mixes up there, and you got to know each guy's mix. Are you kind of focusing your brain that same way of all these guys' patterns and places, and you're just kind of humming along on your keyboard? But that's you're not even concentrating there. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so glad you uh, you touched on that because for me, I've had to kind of figure that out. You know, it you can't, um, I I can't like enjoy as a performer and a music director because you have to do so much listening, um, and and I'm just saying that's that's for me. You know, I want to hear what else is going on i have to hear what else is going on and therefore i can't um like rehearsal is when i learn what i'm going to play and then i play that pretty much till the end of the tour like there's no <laughs> there's no like shifting for me and 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 to that point that's that's why i choose who i choose um also because i might get some some people who are a little bit more flashy because i know that i'm gonna be consistent you know what i'm saying so, so it becomes kind of second nature to you the the playing part for your part as a keyboard is like 
So do you, I know that you work a lot with bands where there's also maybe another keyboard player. You, do you give that guy like the more flashy parts? You're just kind of playing in the pocket. Absolutely. Every yeah. time, Pooch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because like sometimes you, I can't imagine. Sometimes you don't want to MD. Yeah. You just want to say, forget it. On this tour, I'm just playing keyboards or bass because I just want to rock out yeah. once in a while. And I don't want all that pressure. So, yeah, sometimes for sure. Now, now for, I think these days it's the opposite. You know, I don't want to play. I just I just want to put it together. I just want to end ah. because once once I'm confined to that space, then now we have to do double work because I still got to walk out to front of house and listen. And when I'm listening now, I'm listening to the absence of what I'm playing. So it's, it's really, it becomes annoying for me. And I'm just like, can we just get a keyboard play? <laughs> you know, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, I so um, along the same lines with this, I think that there's maybe some sound guys that are watching this that want to know um, what it is that you're looking for as an MD, what are you looking for out of a monitor engineer and a front of house guy? Like what, what are the, the things, the, the good ones that you've worked with, uh, me excluded, <laughs> the good ones that you've worked with, um, what are the things that they did that were like, oh man, I, I wish everyone did that and made my job easier. Yeah. Okay. So in monitor world, um, thinking about things before beforehand uh, really listening to our mixes you know having a conversation about what what you like to hear and not assuming that we just want to hear everything or you know or ourselves loud um you know stuff like that so it's um, communication right it's like you you want that guy to be talking to all your musicians yeah. And, and having a discussion with them about what they need. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, and, and vice versa, too, you know, like un, from the band perspective, understanding what position the monitor person is in and how we can contribute to them having a better experience. Like, for <laughs> instance, guys, we're not going to get up here and just start wailing away and then all five of us are going to ask for things louder or softer at the same time. What we're going to do, <laughs> this is the saga way. Yeah. Drums, bass, keys, you know what I'm saying? And so then we get it down to a rhythm where we just know that when the band gets on stage, you don't expect all this noise, but you're going to get it in a very organized way. You're going to get the kick first. You're going to get, and then that's just how we roll every single sound check, right? So we, we, we try and give those things and we would like some of the same, um, you know, the same considerations uh, in terms of monitor world. Um, so now front of house, yeah. you know, Pooch, you really changed the game when we met. So oh, yeah. and first I'm out. So my, my previous experiences, right. I mean, I've had great experiences, but um, I've never had uh, someone who is mixing front of house come to band rehearsal, just band rehearsal, like not band rehearsal and you're mixing in another room. Like right. no, there's no console. It's just band rehearsal. You didn't have to be there, but you were there listening to the the music listening to the arrangements and the feel of of what we were trying to do so by the time we got set up you you already knew where we were going you knew the dynamics of each song you were there taking notes and for me that blew me away bro oh i was just like yo this is the best thing ever <laughs> You know, it's it's funny that you say that because I try to pass that on how important prep for a tour is, you know, and um, as a front of house guy, I know that whenever I get hired for whatever band, the first thing I do is huge amounts of research, like buying all their records, listening to all their catalog, taking notes, 
Um, you know, I used to, back in analog days, I would have the super thick binder that I would show up with to a production rehearsal that I already had notes taken, you know, about that, about what's going on. Um, nowadays it's in my phone, but, <laughs> but, um, man, I, I appreciate you noticing that because, um, that I think, I believe that's important, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, another, another just life-changing moment for me, I remember we were doing it, we were on tour and, um, so I went to front of house and it sounded, this is my first time going to front of house as a music director. Yep. You know, and I was just transitioning from becoming like keyboard player to now music director. So as a keyboard player, all those years, we're jamming on stage. Sure. Yeah, great. We're killing. As a music director, I go to front of house and I'm like, this sounds nothing like how we rehearsed it or what we envisioned, you know? Right. I just remember being like, wow. Has it been sounding like this the whole time I've been touring? Like, what? You know what I mean? So I, I just remember saying, okay, I got to pay attention to this area as, as well. Because if it's not connecting, it's just, what are we doing this for, you know? That's absolutely right. Like I, you know, the, my role as a front of house guy is the, is for the end user, right? So you guys are jamming up there, but you don't know what's happening in front of the house. I prefer, you know, people say, oh, I don't want anybody coming in front of the house and telling me what to do. I want you there, man. I want your input. I want you to, you know, to um, express to me what your vision is, um, you know, a, as the musical director. Um, so, um, yeah, that's awesome. So I think those are some tips, guys, uh, what a musical awesome. director is looking for. It's more than just tips. If you notice, he didn't say anything about, I need more 6K on my hi-hat, and I know a monitor engineer is good because of that. It was nothing about the skills. When you're at that level, you know the guy already knows what he's doing. The main thing he talked about was communication and, and listening and trying to be on the same wavelength. And, you know, if I hire a carpenter to come in here and, and I want my pictures hung a certain way, I need him to see my vision. And I think with the band, they, they want you to help see their vision. And that's what it's about. And it's all has to do with communication. So I just like them to take note. It was nothing about, you know, he was using a certain kind of piece of equipment or EQ or anything. It was all about communication. Yeah. And relationships. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, hey, so there's a question in the Q&A right now, which is a pretty good question. So have you used in Monitor World, have you used any of the spatial audio things like Clang? Mm -hmm. um and what do you think about it and does it confuse you or help distinguish what uh each guy plays do you like it or not right right i haven't personally used it yet um but we've been talking about it and so hopefully you know in the in in, in the future we'll give it a try but i mean in the I demo i know a guy <laughs> <laughs> Tanner is like literally the one of the reps for Clang. So if you, if you want to look, get hooked up, he's the guy. Yeah, I've heard good things about it thus far. Yeah. So let's pivot. Let's pivot a little bit into broadcast now, because I want to talk about like what's happening right now. Where you know you say you're you're still heavily involved with your church, right? So. Um, I know that churches have just pivoted to this, you know, being all online. Yeah. Um, and and certainly, I think probably in the beginning of us coming back uh, to after COVID or during COVID is going to be a, a large amount of that, like guys learning how to do broadcast. Um, so tell us your experience of, of how how's that been for you? <laughs> it's been a ramp up, right? It really, it really, really has. Um, but I think it's been, it's been pretty cool. Um, still learning, right? But, uh, you know, when all of this happened, um, you know, I, my church was just like in scramble mode, as I'm sure, you know, most churches were. Um, because the one thing that, you know, they do, they couldn't do anymore. And so, um, so we had to figure, start figuring it out. And, you know, it's just like, well, we need to get into this digital space. 
how do we get into this digital space? So, you know, they started just, just using their cell phone. And, you know, for me, I'm just like, when I look back on it, I'm like, the audio <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You know what I'm so so then I just started going in and just doing a bunch of research. Okay, what can we use for iPhones and iPads? You know, uh, and the, so the Rolling Go mixer came up. That was the first thing, and uh, so I called you know my buddy uh, Igor at Rolling. And I was like, yo, man, I need like 50 of these. <laughs> I'll get them from you right now. And lo and behold, you know, we don't have any. We're out of stock. Yeah, right. But I managed to get get two of them and uh, started messing around with them. And I was like, okay, this, these are cool. It gives you a direct, you know, input um, that's better than your phone speaker. So, and then I was like, but now I want to add a little verb or something. Like, <laughs> you know how we are. <laughs> I know. So, so then I'm like, okay, what can I get that? So then uh, my boy who's with Yamaha, he called them and said, hey, do you guys have anything? So then they have these little mixers. Um, I think it's called an AG03 or AG06. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but same kind of thing like the Roland, but now it has EQ, verb, compressor, you know. Nice. Um, and then it even has a, a an amp modeler. So okay. Like you can plug a guitar in and, and go nuts, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it could connects directly to your iDevice. Right. So then we started using those kind of things to do the streams and uh, IG live and stuff like that. And so for me, it just, it took the quality from here to here. You know what I mean? Just, just like that. Um, and then we started doing these virtual videos, you know, how on Sundays you'll, you'll have like song service and they'll do two or three songs. And so we, we had to do that. Uh, but you know, but uh, we had to pre-record it. So what I started doing is um, putting virtual bands together, you know, and I'm like, well, I can do it like for real. So I might as well do it <laughs> <laughs> virtually, right? Yeah, virtually. And, and so it's been cool. Like church for me, whether it's because I'm in LA, like musicians move to LA all the time. And the first thing they need to do is make some money. So for me, church serves as the connection to the heartbeat of like musicians coming in and out of LA because a job is always here. I can always offer a musician a job. And so I like to like meet new musicians and say, hey, you know, um, let's get to know each other. Come play at my church. You know, I, I got a check for you, but also it's a chance for us to connect. You know, um, so the same thing started happening remotely. You know, um, I started just kind of reaching out to some people who I didn't know, but like followed online because they're dope. Right. And saying, hey, man, you know, I got X amount for you. If you can, you know, record <laughs> a clean audio and, 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 and video and send it back. And so then it just kind of became a thing and, and that I look forward to, you know, because now I get to play with my friends who I haven't played with in years or, you know, they're, they've been on other tours, but now we get to like do a couple of songs together each week. So that's kind of what it's morphed into in terms of uh, live streaming and pre-records and stuff. So not all, we can't be making K-pop money all the time. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you know, me and me and Pooch a long time ago, we bought we bought gear and we rent that out to supplement our incomes and all that stuff. And I know you've got a facility in L.A. now on top of everything you do. You've got a facility down there in L.A. And, I, and I'm not quite sure what what the facility is totally about. Can you can you tell us is it just for, for play, place to rehearse or is there more than that there? 
Yeah, so so the goal is for it to be a one-stop shop for um, rehearsals or streaming um, or even photo shoots, video shoots, podcasts. Um, so I'm partnered in with my manager, Jennifer Horton, and she um, she has this space in downtown LA. It's it's pretty dope. Like you can throw parties there. You have we have like a a, a white psych that just looks amazing on camera. Um, man, they brought in lighting trust, LED <laughs> wall. Like I brought in my PA, you know, and and uh, we're multi tracking. So we really just wanted to create a dope spot where people can come and 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 do their live streams and, and, and what's the name can they find it online or anything like that yet it's called the aces uh experience a, a c e s experience um i don't know if they set up online online yet but i'll shoot you guys the the trailer uh so you can check it out um and and so what we did was we set everything up and and, and we just for a week we just had artists and and um, performers just come through just like pull up and do something and so it was dope we had v v bozeman come through with she's on um she's an actress and a singer and uh we had a couple of def jam artists come through we had my boy t nava um and he actually recorded his performance for the roots virtual picnic oh um, wow cool yeah, that nice. aired a couple of weeks ago. So that was dope. Um, so yeah, we're you know, we're having managers come through and, and, and check it out, but it's it's going to serve as a one stop shop for content. And and then I was t- uh telling Pooch, you know, for me, when we have band rehearsals, we can have it there. Um, you know what I mean, and just post up there for that's people. awesome. So yeah. So, and you're also doing, I know, a podcast, right? Coming up, like you, you haven't done it yet, but it's coming, right? It's coming, it's coming. I'm doing a podcast and it's, uh, it's for me, it's going to be centered around um, people who have like impacted uh, my life. And I'll start with how they did, you know, a, 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 a short story about how what I learned from them. The cool thing is it's not going to be all people who I've been chummy chummy with. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so right. so it might it might have a few people in there who like we we did this for a little bit. And wow. but in retrospect, you know, everything is is a learning experience. And if we can humble ourselves enough and just go, hey, what could I have done differently? How could I have learned from this? Um, so so whether it was a, a hard lesson or just filled with good times, I'm going to uh, have those conversations with the people who have impacted my life and my career and just take a second to give them their, their flowers. Oh man, that's so awesome. Good for you. And so people uh, just keep an eye, I guess, on your Facebook probably and your Instagram and um, that'll be, that'll be coming soon. Um, We're, we're getting down to the end here, but there's always a few, a couple of questions that uh, we like to ask. Um, One of them is uh, if you could turn back time and talk to your 18 year old self, what would you tell yourself? Man, have more girlfriends. <laughs> it's okay. My wife knows the answer to this. <laughs> I've had a lot more fun, man. <laughs> um, you were too busy practicing the keyboards. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, my 18 year old self. Uh, I th- I think I think that I would have. Um, my 18 year old. So I think that I would have just kind of focused a little bit more. I think that's probably everybody's, you know, answer. Um, I would have focused more and and just tried to make a, a couple of 
uh, decisions differently. <laughs> I always tell I always tell younger kids that are like in the sound team. I wish that I'd done things like uh, invest in real estate. You know, I wish that I was 20 years old and owned a house already because it took until I was 36 or something like that before I owned a house. And had I started when I was 20 years old, investing my money and taking every little bit of money that I have and putting it aside, um, you know, I, I maybe could be talking about retiring here in a few years, which is nah, you, not you probably lost yeah. it all and trying to make it back again. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And for me, you know, I, 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 I invested, I bought, bought a house when I was, you know, in my early twenties and, but I didn't listen to my, my mom. Like I wanted a moving ready, you know, top of the line, whatever. And she was like, no, 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 get a, get something you could fix up. I was like, no. You know? And uh, yeah, she, no, she was right. <laughs> it's funny how that usually works like that <laughs> right and now that i have kids i'm getting it i'm getting it man. now are you are you uh making your kids take piano lessons and all that stuff oh yeah for yeah. sure <laughs> they have to live it too that's great i had to do this so are you <laughs> oh that's great all the revenge is coming <laughs> <laughs> now on your are you available at all i know a lot of musicians are doing this you might be pretty busy you got a lot of stuff going on are you doing any online lessons at all i, I know it's getting kind of popular yeah so i have a master class coming up um that i'm doing with mi and um and that's that's kind of where we are right now i'm just gonna do a few master classes online and i really want to kind of build from there because as you guys know it's a different feel it's a different you know kind of thing um so I'm, I'm going to be doing that coming up we had to postpone it um just with everything that's been going on um, right now, but as soon as things calm down, I'll, I'll do it again. And I'll be doing a few of those. That's fantastic. I just know when I was a kid, if I had access to, to that with my favorite musicians and stuff like that, wow. I mean, that's just such a great outlet to, to learn and, and meet people and all that stuff. I just, yeah. you know, we didn't have that access back then, but yeah, so yeah, great. Don't. and, and now it's a, um, you know, as far as the playing goes, there's so much access in terms of what you can learn um, on your instrument, but I think it's uh, incumbent upon us to like create that layer of like what what you can't learn necessarily on 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 your instrument, but you need to know for like life and like and doing what we do, um, touring and 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 performing and. Uh, because there's, 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 I get a lot of, um, you know, younger guys coming in and they're very talented, but then this other space that we have to live in is, if it's not just important, it's even more important than what you know on your instrument. So I'm, I'm glad that you guys are creating a space like this uh, as well, you know? Oh, yeah, thanks. I think we're just... Yeah. Just trying to trying to get that out there that and plus it might not be the lifestyle that they want to choose anyway. And it's best to find that out early so you can, you know, take your skills and put it in another another area. But um, you're right. That's and that's why we're not on this exclusively talking about where the fader needs to go and using a 58 on a vocal and all that stuff, because there's so much more to it now than just that. So we're trying to get that out there. And I got to I got to say today, the information you've provided Fantastic. I mean, can't thank you enough. Yeah, absolutely, man. Hey, uh, one last question as we uh, we wind this down. Um, what question should I have asked you that I didn't know enough about you to ask? Oh, man. What questions should you have asked me that you didn't know enough about me to ask? <laughs> I don't, I don't even know, Pooch. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's just like, man, you know, you are um, an amazing, multi-talented person, and there's so much going on behind the scenes. Um, you know, there's stuff that I don't know about you that uh, I want to learn about you. Um, yeah, me too. Jeez. Know. I mean, we could have went on. I mean, I, this hour is, I always say how short it is. And, 
you yeah. know, just, we could have gone an hour on how you learning streaming and psychology. I mean, yeah. just the choice of going into psychology and knowing that that was going to be a big role. I mean, that that's just brilliant, especially I'm sure you were younger then, a lot younger, right? To make those decisions. I mean, yeah. I, I know I didn't make those decisions. I've had to learn the hard way. And you said, you say you make mistakes along the way and you've corrected them like everybody does. But that was just some yeah. great foresight on this business because it's just stuff yeah. you don't think about. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I don't know if you if you do know Pooch, but I definitely want to at some point be behind that console. <laughs> I think really? that's, that's wow. my gig. That's my dream right there. <laughs> wow. Okay. In a live way or in a, in a studio way? No, absolutely live. Wow. Uh, Very uh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. But I don't want to, I don't see, I'm, 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 I'm being a hypocrite right now. I don't want to start at the small gigs. I <laughs> at <the> stadium. <laughs> I don't want to go to the big PA. I want all of that, right? That's where I want to start. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, there's you. there's going to be a lot of bands going out here uh, coming yeah. up in, in the fall. They're going to need for the house guys. I'm going to throw. Let's hope the first calls are all K-pop gigs. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about crashing and burning. God, Oh man, you know what? I have no doubt that you would be amazing at that as well. So, um, man, Gil, thank you so much for coming yeah. in and, and sharing your knowledge and um, your expertise. Um, I, I find you uh, so humble and um, so talented, which is an unusual com uh, a combination in this industry. And um, so, um, I appreciate you, man. I love you. You're 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 awesome. And thank you guys for everything. I, Pooch, you have poured into my life in ways that you don't know, man. And I hope that we are able to just continue working together for years to come, bro. Me too, man. Me too. Thank you, Tater. Thank you, Gil. Guys, Can't thank you enough. Hey, guys. So um, that was amazing conversation. Uh, we wish we could go for another hour, but... Um, Next week on Wrong End of the Snake, we have Noam Raz and Yaniv Litmanovich. Very uh, Israeli names, both of those guys. Uh, it's a two-for-one Tuesday. Uh, Noam is the live market manager for Wave Software based in Tel Aviv. And Yaniv is the senior product manager for the Waves LV1 software audio console and a bunch of plugins that he was involved. I'm sure plugins that you guys use. Um, uh, he's been a product manager there for many, many years. Uh, both have vast experience in the music industry and unique perspective on building relationships through teamwork uh, at a large corporation. Uh, so come on by next week and we'll have both of those guys on to talk a little bit about plugins and where they come from and, and all that stuff. So thanks okay. for tuning in, guys. We sure do appreciate it. Gil, once again, thank you so much. Fantastic. Um, and Fantastic. thanks for tuning in, guys. Tell your friends, um, and uh, we'll see.